What is up guys? Today I've got something pretty special for you guys over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash gelswick, link in the description for that. I went through all the major fall anime coming up this season. The season's already kind of gotten started, which means you guys have an exclusive look at my garbage taste and first impressions. This is in fact a first impressions video. If I have an opinion that you don't necessarily like, well I'm just kind of getting a gist of these shows trying to share what I think off of a first glance basis, what I would think of these shows, and hopefully share some of my knowledge having seen a few anime with you guys. If you like the video, if you like the concept, go ahead and click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I hopefully will do something like this for winter as well. If you guys want to see that, please let me know in a comment down below. But now, let's get straight into my garbage first impressions for the upcoming season. Where better to start? with the 2022 fall season than Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man is an interesting case altogether, not just because it looks great, but because it's done by MAPPA, the same people who did Jujutsu Kaisen. Manga fans are going nuts over it. It just, it looks great. It will break records if it's good. The next closest thing in terms of members right now is Mob Psycho 100 season three. It's only got half of what Chainsaw Man has. Half. There's that much hype for it. If Chainsaw Man flops, it will be one of the biggest flops in anime history up to this point. And I really do hope that it, it's, it's good. The manga readers know the story's good, but execution does matter. I do have faith in MAPPA for it, because MAPPA's just great, but you never know. Mob Psycho 100 Season 3, as I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on sequels. It looks great. Um, there's, a, there's a big controversy over it right now because of the dub schedule. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Crunchyroll, who is producing the dub for the next season, basically heard the demands of one of the actors who played the lead. He said, like, we're not going to pay you. Um, this rate, and he said it's a union rate, you'd have to, and so Crunchyroll's like, yeah, we'll just do a non-union thing. People are kind of ticked about that. So if you're a dub watcher, which I'm not personally, if you're a dub watcher, you're mad at Crunchyroll right now. Mob Psycho 100, though, uh, fans should be excited for it. It does look good. If you're a dub watcher, though, it, it's unfortunate what's going on right now. Hopefully it gets resolved, but I do not have high hopes. Last but not least of the top row, we've got Spy Family Part 2. It's one of those that I'm sure manga readers saw was going to be a hit from a mile away, but to the average anime fan who doesn't keep track, this one probably came out of nowhere. To me, it's a little suspicious how quickly they, they got this done, because to me it feels like uh, I have no proof or basis for this, but it feels like they might have had this one planned out a little bit. I, I, I will say... Anything done by Cloverworks is good. It's also got Wit Studio that I'm not as familiar with, but anything done by Cloverworks, I immediately trust. It's interesting because Cloverworks is actually a subsidiary company of A1, and A1 does the Fairy Tale, Blend S, Your Lie in April. They've done bad shows too, but they've done a lot of great stuff. If Chainsaw Man happens to flop, at least Mob Psycho 100 and then Spy X Family, Spy Family, whatever you want to call it, will be able to uh, carry the weight of the anime season. I am not even going to touch Boku no Hero Academia 6th season. If I say anything positive, they'll, a they'll ask me why it wasn't positive enough. And if I say anything negative, well, then I will burn in the fiery pits of Twitter. And I, I fully expect it to do well. Its fan base will always be there for it. It's not going anywhere. We got the middle one here. And I... I have a lot of feelings on Bleach, because I watched, like, a couple seasons of Bleach, and it's considered one of the big three, and it, to me, Bleach proves why I'll never love any of the big three shonen. It's boring, I'm sorry. When I watched Bleach, I was, like, midway through the Soul Society arc, and I was like, I can't take this. I don't care if it gets better in 100 episodes. It was boring to me. Bleach is of good quality, don't get me wrong. Just because it's not my thing, I get that other people would enjoy it. If I am a Bleach fan, I am so excited for this season. The problem with it is, I don't know how it's going to release. <laughs> and it is, it is in fact in the hands uh, of Disney+. Plus. We just don't know how it's going to be handled. I was very, very disappointed with how Summertime Render was handled. 
I think what the official term is they're going to Netflix it. And I hope that doesn't happen because Bleach fans have been waiting so long for this. To Your Eternity Season 2. I haven't seen the first season. It's popular, but it doesn't look like it's of much interest to myself. I probably will not watch it anytime soon. It could be good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and if somebody says, no, it's to put it towards the top of your watch list, I wouldn't oppose them. But at this point, it's not one that I'm, I'm dying to catch up on. Blue Lock. Blue Lock's one that I hadn't even, like, heard of or something until recently. But apparently, there's a lot of hype around Blue Lock. After reflecting on the current state of Japanese soccer, the Japanese Football Association decides to, to hire the enigmatic and eccentric coach Jim Pachi Ego to achieve their dream of winning the World Cup. Believing that Japan has lacked an egoistic striker hungry for goals, Jim Pachi initiates the Blue Lock, a prison-like facility where 300 talented strikers from high schools all over Japan are isolated and pitted against each other. The sole survivor of Blue Lock will earn the right to become the team's national team striker, and those who are defeated shall be banned from joining the team forever. This is a loaded plot, sounds really interesting, and this, this sounds intense, quite frankly. It's like a Hunger Games, but for soccer. I'll say this uh, up front, I don't care for sports anime. I, I do not watch Haikyuu. I have no desire to watch it. I have no desire to watch most sports anime. I, the premise of this one is particularly interesting because it's kind of like a, a, a free-for-all Hunger Games style show. Uzaki-chan. I will say I did not watch the first season, but what I have seen is Nagatoro. I, I really like Nagatoro. I think it's a really um, surprisingly wholesome show. And I, I believe that just judging by the kind of show that it is, I would enjoy Uzaki-chan. The caveat with that one is you have to be of the demographic that kind of likes that show. The Eminence in Shadow. This is one that I don't know anything about. Um, I haven't heard a lot of hype around it or anything, but it's somehow managed to self 81,000 members on my anime list, so let's give it a shot. Great heroes and diabolical villains are the types of characters that people long to be, but not Sid Kageno. He longs to become the true mastermind behind it all, pulls the strings, and having his machinations drive the entire story. In his previous life in modern day, day Japan, he was not able to achieve his goals, but now reborn into a world of magic, so it's an isekai, it sounds, he will show the true eminence of Shadow. It's it's interesting how kind of dark it is, like a cult isekai. I would maybe, if I, if I would say, like, here's my opinion on what you should do with the show, I'd say give it the old three-episode rule. If it seems like it's going somewhere, great. If it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, maybe drop it. All right, welcome to Demon School, uh, season three. It's another isekai. This one's continued for a third season. If you are running as an isekai for a third season, you've got to have something good about you. Not my not my cup of tea, um, animation style-wise, but doesn't look bad by any means. This one is very intriguing. If you guys have not heard of this one, I, I'm pretty excited for this one. And you'll notice up here already, 46 episodes are to be made of this show. Urusei Yatsuda. This show is a remake of a 1980s anime. This is a classic show that they are rebooting from the ground up. The animation looks gorgeous. This show looks like it has a lot of potential to be a really good show. There's one key element of this that people kind of tend to skip over, but is huge in terms of this show's success. That's the fact that it's done by David Production. David Production were the ones who did JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the animation for that. I have really high hopes for this show. There's a reason it's getting so many episodes up front. It has the fan base, the popularity. Can it execute? And and can it translate to the this modern era? I really hope so, and I'm really excited to give it a shot. Um, this next one, I don't know really anything about. Um, it's a second season of Kante Collection, eight episodes. Not a lot of info out on it yet. I'm kind of expecting a flop out of that one. All right, starting off strong, we got an isekai. And of course, it, it can't be normal. So it's reincarnated as a sword. 
got our first one that is a bona fide, 100%, no questions asked. Skip. A s reincarnated as a sword? The studio's out of ideas. That's all that sounds like. I don't even know the studio who's animating it. Prove me wrong, but that's uh, a skip from me. Golden Kamoi fourth season. I'm shocked it's getting a fourth season because I didn't even know it existed. Typically, if you're getting a, a second season, you have enough notoriety that I will, will have at least heard of you. But the fact that it's season four and I haven't heard of it. So it looks like it's about a guy searching for gold um, during like a wartime or something. It's probably okay. I mean, if it's getting a fourth season enough, people watched it to get a fourth season, so... This one caught my eye pretty early on, uh, but let me let me read uh, the synopsis here. After surviving an attack from the rival Koga clan, Itaki Sakuraba, an ordinary boy, discovers that he is the 19th heir of the Iga Ninja. Itaki learns to become an Iga clan ninja and joins the war between the Iga and Kauga clans. See, a lot of the, the hits of this season, I think, will be very, very much expected. But there's always one sleeper hit. And this one, the the graphic looks good here, and it sounds like it's a it's an interesting, like, concept. This one says, uh, I'll, I'll just call it uh, Akuyaku. I, I think the synopsis for this one is going to be a lot better than the show itself. I think this one sounds like it's going to be mid-isekai. Next up, more than a married couple, but not lovers. Third year high school student Jiro Yakuin, a little young for a married couple, uh, might I add, hoped to partner with Shiori Sakuraz Sakurazaka of the same class in the mandatory couple practical course. In this practical, Students must demonstrate that they have the necessary skill set to live with a partner of the opposite sex while, pretend, while presenting a certain level of harmony to the video game video surveillance that grades them. Unfortunately, random chance put his slightly subdued self into the practical with the person polar opposite to him. This is the trash we've been looking for these seasons. Let's go! Woo! This is the kind of crap that I'm going to watch, I'm going to enjoy, and it's going to be so stupid, but I, I will watch every episode of this. For real though, do I expect this show will ever get a second season? Absolutely not. Do I think it'll be good? Probably not. Do I think it's going to be a dumpster fire worth watching? Absolutely. This, is not, this isn't, isn't going to be groundbreaking or revolutionary, but I, I have a feeling it'll be entertaining, uh, and hopefully it won't be too bland. That's, that's always the fear with, with these kinds of rom-coms. They can have the tendency to be a little bit uh, on the bland side. So we'll see. We'll see. Do It Yourself. Do It Yourself follows high school girls working on DIY projects as they struggle, fail, yet don't give up and see the projects through to their end. The story depicts the lives of those girls as they take the first step towards the future. This just doesn't, this is a horrible synopsis. Like, are we talking like woodworking type do-it-yourself projects? Uh, are we talking like baking? Are we talking, like, what what defines do-it-yourself? And then, like, is there going to be any narrative to this? I, I feel like this is very much in the cute girls doing cute things genre. Um, but judging by the title and the description here, I, I don't know. This one, this one sounds lame. I, I would give it, uh, th this is one that I would probably put in the three episode rule category where it's like, yeah, okay, watch it and see if there's kind of a point to it. Doesn't seem like there's a lot to it. I, I'll put it this way. I would much rather watch more than a married couple, but not lovers than do it yourself based on these descriptions. This is... Yeah, that's a light novel title and a half. Nomen Kanren no Skill Baka uh, Ageta Ara Nazaka Tsuyoku Nata. Perfect, got it, first try. Al Wayne, that is the most American name ever. That's the most like, we are going to come up with a, a, an American name. Al Wayne, a young man who aims to be a top-notch farmer. Al Wayne is very much a farmer name has refined his farming skills and finally reached the max level. 
However, once he achieved the pinnacle of farming skills, for some reason, his life began to take a drastic direction. Not enough details here to really get an idea, but I kind of am with you, Chippy. Farmer anime. Kind of an L. Um, if you are looking for a show to put you to sleep, this looks like the show for you. Uh, I'm going to start with the middle one here. That's, that's that. It's the second season of a harem show. You know what you're getting. <laughs> now, Beast Tamer. Rain is kicked out of the party and now lives freely as an adventurer. On his journey, he meets a girl from a cat tribe, the so-called Strongest Species. Elsewhere, the Heroes Party remains unaware that their previous success was all thanks to Rain. This is the story of a Beast Tamer no longer held back and his fateful encounter with a pre precious companion. I don't know. It, it's it, so it sounds surface level mid, but it just depends on how they take it. Um... And cat girls are always a dub, so it, it could be good. It could be good. I don't want to say it's worth watching, but I'd give it an episode or two, see if it may be worth your time. Ah, uh, easy to pronounce names for all of them. This is great. I want to start with uh, Raven of the Inner Peace. It This one looks good. Stories talk of her use of mysterious arts and how she can take on any request, be it death curses to finding lost things, Koshun... The current emperor goes to visit the raven consort with that intention, without knowing that their fated meeting will become a taboo that will overturn history. A lot of the time, the, like things like this that can turn out really good, or they become convoluted and they make no sense. This one I'd give a solid three episode rule to. Um, give it the time of day, it is worth the time of day, but even though it's worth the time of day, I could definitely see this one getting convoluted. Pop Team Epic Second Season. I don't know too much about it. And you enjoyed the first season of Pop Team Epic. I would give it to you. I just don't... I can't speak much to it. But it, it looks like it could be fun. Bachi the Rock. And there's a there's a reason I want to kind of get into this one. Um, but let's, let's go through the synopsis first. And then I'm going to say my piece on it. Because this is one that you may not have heard of. Uh, Hitori Goto is a high school girl who's starting to learn to play the guitar because she dreams of being in a band, but she's so shy that she hasn't made a single friend. However, her dream might come true after she meets Nijika Ijichi, a girl who plays drums and is looking for a new guitarist in her band. Purposefully vague. It is a little vague, right? I, I, I won't say that I like can get a full grasp of the story just by reading this, but there's a key detail to Bachi the Rock that I think makes it worth watching. Cloverworks, the masters themselves of Slice of Life, they did Horamiya. It was excellent. And this kind of gives me Horamiya vibes, but maybe more kind of wholesome and, and comedic than something like Horamiya, which was strictly a drama, right? I love Cloverworks in general. This one sounds a little bland on the surface, but I would wager to say if Cloverworks is behind it, it will be entertaining. I would say give Bocce the Rock at least uh, a three episode try, but my, my gut feeling is we'll be around for all 12 if we start it. Princess of the Bibliophile. For as long as she could read, Eliana Bernstein, known more commonly as the Bibliophile Princess, has preferred the company of books to that of people. However, as a noble, it is her duty to find a suitor. Fortunately for her, Crown Prince Christopher Selkirk Asherland proposes a deal. He will protect her free time, and in exchange, Eliana will be his fiance in name only. But as Christopher grows close to another girl, Eliana realize, begins to realize that she isn't as indifferent to him as she once thought. This is a uh, this is a hard one for me. I think it's simple. Um, I am curious as to how it would play out. So I, yeah, I. Let's say give that a watch. I would hope that it would be good. I could definitely see it not being, but that's that's one I'd watch on a week-to-week -week basis. If, if it starts getting lame, then uh, drop it. Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witch from Mercury. I'm just gonna say Gundam just does not interest me all that much. Mecha shows are kind of hard for me to, to get into otherwise. Play it cool, guys. <laughs> they are handsome guys who are cool. <laughs> but a little hard to approach. What a opening line. They are handsome guys who are cool, but a little hard to approach. However, they are all clumsy. 
Ha <laughs> ha, big twist there. Got him. Did not see that coming. Because they're clumsy, they're relatable. Relatability. I just say we give that one a 10 out of 10 right off the bat. That, that one is only going to have 15 minute episodes. I don't even know how many episodes it's going to have in total. Yeah, it's, uh, legitimately though, that ah, skip it. Skip this one. So we'll do this one. This will be our, our last row. Red Eye Flops. Um, I, I have a couple things to say about this one. It, it's interesting in premise to me. Um, so let me go ahead and, and read out the plot synopsis and then I'll give you kind of my, my two cents. Kashiwagi lives the typical life of an average high school student until the day a TV fortune teller's predictions come true one after another, culminating in a series of risque encounters. Destiny seemingly draws five beautiful girls into Asahi's path, and soon he finds himself fielding not one, not two, but five love confessions. Asahi will need to follow his heart to find the perfect love for him, or else his love fortunes may end in one epic fa flail and flop. This one to me could be good. It also very well could be an etchy show because it's done by Passione. Passione definitely has that edge to them, but even though they've got that edge to them, Passione is a very good studio. They're a very reputable studio in terms of animation quality. They, it will be funny. It will be um, well animated, but we'll see if, it, uh, if it's good or if the fortunes end in one epic fail and flop. Next up, Immoral Guild. It says it right here. We know for a fact it's Eshi. Watch at your own risk. Children. Harem Eshi. Kikuru Madan is a monster hunter with excellent performance because of his particular job in the forest, but he decided to quit it because of fear wasting his own youth. Pretty uh, self-explanatory here. It's just going to be a comedy fantasy harem show. Um, I don't have any particular expectations for this one. Maybe give it an episode, see if you like it, uh, but I probably would not recommend it. Shinmai Renshin... Sh uh, I'm just not even gonna try. That's a, that's a hard one. We'll call it uh, K.A. K.A. Shoot for the stars. I'm going to be the country's number one alchemist. When young girl Sarasa graduated from the Royal Alchemist Academy, her teacher gifted her a house for her to shut up shop, aiming to become a master class alchemist. She gathers materials herself, experiments, and operates a business. In her very own atelier, I don't know what that is, Sarasa indulges in a slow and relaxed alchemist life. I, I, I don't know, are people like bored or something with watching like action shows? So we need to watch shows about like mundane life because i swear this is like the fourth or fifth one where it's like this person wanted to do this super cool action thing but instead they decided to kick back and retire i i'd give this an episode if you want to and there you go those are some of my initial opinions on anime if you've made it to the very end of this video i've left a steam key down in the description below you can redeem it, see what game I got for you. If you redeem that code, please leave a comment, let me know. I'd love to see uh, if anybody sticks around to the very end of the video. It pays to be a Grant Ellswick YouTube watcher. But yeah, that all said, maybe I'll make it a little more public next time, but I thought I'd hide it at the end just to see which of y'all are true Grant Ellswick fans. All that said, once again, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next week with a new vid per usual.